I'll be making a uh, thin section of a garnet mica chest based on this picture which shows such a thin section in plain polarized light and another alternative view in XPL and of course some videos which are on YouTube and have been posted on the website. So we begin with a blank sheet of paper and then the first thing we do is we draw the field of view, a circle, and that's why you need this, this bowl. If you don't have a bowl, you can of course use a protractor. That's that. And with my ruler, I will draw a line through the middle of this, to the left of which I will show the properties of the minerals in PPL and to the right in XPL. On the bottom, very importantly, I have to draw the scale bar. This field of view is when we use the lowest magnification of the microscope, roughly four centimeters in size. If you want to measure that with your microscope, then you just put a transparent ruler under the microscope and count the number of ticks that you can see. All right, let's begin with our first mineral. The first mineral is very easy to draw. It is uh, opaque and PPL. So I just draw a black blob. And because it is opaque in PPL, obviously in XPL, it will also look black. Right, so that's mineral A. All we can say about this mineral is that it is opaque. If we want to learn more about this mineral, you have to use a different kind of microscope. So on the bottom of my thin section description, I will write the modal, uh, the modal analysis. And the first mineral that goes there will be A, opaque, which in the case of siliciclastic or igneous or metamorphic rocks is mostly going to be iron oxide of some sort, either iron titanium oxide, either ilmenite or hematite or magnetite. All right, let's uh, move on to something more interesting. Second mineral, which I will prominently place in the middle of my field of view in order to compare and contrast the properties in PPL and XPL side by side. Notice how I make the edges of this mineral very dark. There's a reason for that. I'll get to that in a second. I'm drawing this sketch very quickly. It's not important. This doesn't have to be a work of art. It has to be clear. You have to show the properties, the diagnostic features of the minerals to me. And that's why you should be bold and draw in strong lines. Right, so um, what can we say about this mineral? Mineral B. Well, I have drawn the edges very dark in PPL. And that is because this is a mineral with a very I relief, which means that it has a very high refractive index. It is also colorless in many cases, but this particular variety of this mineral it actually has a bit of a, a pinkish color. So I will draw it in pink, I will color it in with pink. Yeah, so the color is 
pinkish. Um, the mineral has no cleavage, that's why I've drawn these crooked lines because instead of cleavage it has lots of fractures. And finally I can't really see any crystal shape. There's a hint of the hexagonal cross section that you can see and other uh, specimens of this uh, mineral. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely not eudral. Euhedral, it's sub to, in this case, even anhedral. So those are the properties in PPL. Let's now list the properties in XPL. Well, that's very easy. In XPL, we need one color, and that's black. Because this mineral, and that is by far its most diagnostic property, is isotropic. That means that no matter under what angle you look at it in XPL, it will always be completely extinct. It's not birefringent, it is isotropic. And that, of course, means that this mineral, there can be no mistake about it, is garnet. Right, so that's mineral B. Let's now uh, move on to mineral uh, C. I will uh, draw this very schematically. Again, we don't have to make a work of art, we have to present our evidence that leads us to identify this mineral. It's a very different texture or habit than mineral B. Right, so uh, it comes in two varieties. Let's begin with the first variety. Mineral C is uh, has a moderate relief. Yeah. It's definitely not as high as the uh, as the garnet. It is uh, colorless. It has a fibrous habit. And it has one good cleavage, which tends to be perpendicular to the C axis. All right, in uh, XPL, this mineral has a quite spectacular second order birefringence, which generally is of a blue color. That's mineral C, second order. Fringens. And it goes into parallel extinction, which means that when the uh, fibers are oriented in an east west or a north south direction then it goes into extinction and it will look like the garnet. But under other angles, it will have the second order blue birefringence color. Right, 
Right, so this mineral uh, comes in two varieties. The first variety is this fibrous variety, but there's also various instances in this thin section of exactly the same mineral with exactly the same properties having a slightly different habit uh, has the same relief, has the same biofringent scholars, it has the same extinction angle but instead of fibrous this mineral can also have a, an acicular habit. Same mineral. And this mineral, mineral C, is silimanite. Is the high pressure, high temperature variety of uh, the aluminium aluminosilicates. So it's a cousin of andalusite. Right, mineral D. Mineral D is uh, quite abundant in this thin section. It is the most abundant mineral. We get to the modal analysis, or at least the uh, modal composition and the percentages of the minerals at the end of the description. There we go. So I'll be drawing very schematically the cleavages, or the cleavage, that can be seen very clearly in this mineral. Mineral D has a moderate relief. This means that the contact between mineral D and minerals E and F, which I will get to in a second, uh, that contact looks less dark than the contact or the edges of, of the garnet, which has a very high relief. But it does, it does have uh, a higher refractive index than minerals E and F. So it has a moderate relief, it has one good cleavage, it has a platy habit, and the most important and diagnostic feature of this particular mineral is the only mineral in this thin section which in PPL has a color or at least a clearer color than the garnet and most importantly this color changes as you rotate the stage it varies between straw and brown this is in other words, a very strongly pleochroic mineral. Right, in XPL, that same mineral has second order red, brown, green straw colors. They're a bit hard to see because the pleochroism is so strong, and this pleochroic straw to brown overprints the biorefringence colors of mineral D. So mineral D has second order by 
Jones colors. Another very important diagnostic feature of this mineral is that when these cleavage planes, these lines here, are parallel to east, west and north, south, which they almost are in my drawing here, but when they're exactly east, west and north, south, that's when the mineral will go into extinction. Those, so this mineral goes into parallel extinction. And when it does that, just before it goes into extinction, it has this so-called mottled appearance. Which means that it seems to sparkle just before it goes into extinction. So mineral D, based on the uh, pleochroism and the parallel extinction, is clearly biotite.